While everyone is ready to descend upon Mountain View to see what fun new things Google has in store for us this year at its developer conference, I'd like to take a look at last year for a minute. Specifically, let's take a look at the last Google I.O. keynote presentation and see how those announcements have survived the year. This is our Google I.O. 2017 report card. Sundar Pichai took to the stage to tell everyone about all the ways AI contributes to everything Google does today. The first thing that generated a bunch of applause from the crowd was a Google Photos feature called Obstruction Removal, in which a fence was removed from the foreground of a picture to enhance the overall photo. As far as I can tell, judging from my photo collection and the photo collections of every person I've talked to recently, this feature straight up doesn't exist yet, and if it does, it's clearly not particularly widespread or effectively deployed. What Google Photos does do very well from this keynote are the enhanced forms of sharing. The ability to create folders you can invite people to that auto-populate based on facial recognition is just plain cool, and it makes family sharing entirely effortless. Plus, if you find yourself with a collection of photos you love, you can now order a photo book straight from Google Photos. Next up was Smart Replies, a feature originally designed for Gmail. Smart Replies offers up a couple of quick answers to emails based on your language that you can just tap to fill out, and in most cases it works really well. This feature has been so well received this year, we know Google is planning to add to notifications for many other apps in the next version of Android. Google Lens was one of the bigger announcements of I.O. 2017, though we didn't actually see it deployed until much later in the year. Fast forward to today, Google Lens has been available on a ton of Android phones now, as well as the iPhone, and has been slowly and consistently improving over the last couple of months. Lens is fairly good at picking text off a business card or a receipt, and is great at real-time text translation for signs and menus. But most of the image recognition features where Google claims to be able to identify an item and act on it right away or give you options to choose from are unreliable at best right now. A ton of time at this keynote was spent on Google Home and Assistant, which makes sense. Assistant is the most universal form of Google's AI platform right now. And a lot of that is due to the announcements made at this event. Google dramatically increased the number of devices and services supported by Assistant added the ability to communicate with Assistant with text instead of just your voice, and Google Home got Bluetooth support so you can add whatever you want to that speaker. But there are some things that don't work quite as well yet. Assistant transactions promise the ability to order delivery foods seamlessly with your voice and a fingerprint. Integrated Chromecast support promised the ability to play shows and movies from many different services straight to your television with just your voice. And Proactive Assistant is supposed to offer traffic reminders and flight notifications when you ask for an update on the day. In my own testing of each of these features, the functions either don't work at all or require very specific and often overly complicated phrases in order to function. As cool as these demonstrations look on stage, it's difficult to call any of them a success just yet. Last but not least, Android. The Oreo preview was given greater context during this keynote. Features include picture-in-picture -picture support for apps and smart text selection to make it easier to highlight what you're doing for copy and paste. Google also continued its efforts in enhancing notification with dots to make multiple actions available on a single notification. We also got Kotlin support as a full new language for Android development. All of these things are cool, but the most prominent Android announcement from this event continuing to show steady and positive adoption is Android Go where the Android One program didn't really hit the mark for breaching into new markets. Android Go phones have been a great deal more successful. Multiple phones have been released in markets where millions of people are grabbing their first phone ever as a full computer, and the software accompanying that experience has continued to improve, so those users are getting a great set of tools even in areas where data is scarce. So as you can see, not everything announced at Google I.O. continues to be the coolest thing ever one year later. As nice as it is to see how many things have been successful, it will be even more interesting to see how Google approaches the things that didn't quite hit the mark in last year's keynote. And if you want to get our thoughts on those new announcements as they happen, 
be sure to like and subscribe to this channel so we can beam those sounds straight into your brain. Thanks for watching.